Hey guys and welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about the high perform material models and I'm going to try to write a view map for the Blasco model. Before seeing this one through, uh, please watch my other videos, especially the one that I've written a view map for the Mooney Rivlin material model to fully grasp the coding procedure that I'm going to do here. So the high perform material models, such as the Blatz Go model, uh, are a special type of uh, hyperelastic models in which the Poisson's ratio is not uh, near half. It is uh, commonly about uh, 0 0.25 to 0 0.3. And uh, like the hyperelastic uh, material models, the stress-strain relationship drives from a strain energy density function. So the strain energy density function for the Blatzko model is uh, according to this relation. As you can see, this relation is rather complex and it uh, has uh, some exponential form of the third uh, invariant. So uh, this energy function is going to be hard to work with. Therefore, a simplified model uh, for the Blatzko uh, material is used typically, in which the beta parameter is set to zero, alpha is set to half, and nu is set to 0 0.25, and the simplified model is obtained according to this function. Although the simplified model uh, seems uh, easy to work with and uh, easy to grasp the uh, depth of the situation, however, it is unstable, especially in uh, shear loadings. I'm going to uh, write a view mat for the simplified model knowing that it is only going to work for the uh, uniaxial uh, stretches. However, it gives you the idea on uh, how to write a view map for the original uh, energy function. For the simplified model, uh, the Cauchy stresses are obtained by this relation in which I the I is the identity matrix and B is the left Cauchy Green deformation tensor and it is obtained by multiplying F with F transpose. So when we are writing a view mat, we know that we have to take into account the rigid body rotations. As you know, Abacus uh, delivers this rotation to us by uh, giving the uh, formulas, the parameters, the matrices in the co-rotational framework. As a result, we don't have to use the deformation gradient for our calculations and we can simply replace it with the stretch tensor. One of the most uh, important advantages of these uh, kind of um, calculations is that the stretch tensor is symmetric. Uh, however, the F is not symmetric. Therefore, it is easier to work with the, with the U, with the stretch matrix. And also the determinant of the deformation gradient in this situation is equal to the determinant of U. In the next uh, part, I'm going to write a view map for the simplified Blatzko model, and I'm going to use it for a uniaxial stretch and compare it to model that exists in Abacus Solver. Continuing with the view map subroutine, as you know, this is the header and the dimensions, and I have defined some uh, parameters in double precision uh, in which I'm going to use all of these uh, xj, xj1, xj2, xj3 are 
going to be used for the determinant of the deformation gradient. Uh, XB U, XB2, UT are going to be used to obtain the B matrix sigma, X identity, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 are going to be used to obtain the stress matrix. If you look at the uh, Cauchy stresses for the Blasco model, the only input from user is going to be the shear modulus or mu. Next, we are going to uh, calculate the B, B2 matrix, and from them, we are going to calculate I1, the first invariant, the second invariant, and the uh, determinant of the deformation gradient and construct the uh, Cauchy stress matrix. So I'm going to set the sigma matrix equal to zero, and then I'm going to construct the x-identity matrix. The same goes for the B and B2 matrices. Then I'm going to do loops um, for the uh, M-blocks. You know that uh, Abacus gives the new stretch matrix in the form of a stretch new. Uh, for simplicity, I'm going to uh, reformat it uh, according to matrix notation. And this part uh, is for matrix notation. And the last uh, section is because U is a, a symmetric matrix. Next, I'm going to calculate uh, the determinant of the deformation gradient or uh, determinant of the U matrix. For simplicity, I've defined three parameters and uh, the sum of them is going to give me the um, determinant. Next, we can define the B matrix using U multiplied by U transpose. And since U is a, a symmetric matrix, we don't need to transpose it. Here, I've used a subroutine which I've written for matrix multiplications. If you don't have this uh, subroutine, you can simply use the matmul function, which is a built-in for the uh, your Fortran uh, code. And uh, if you want to use the, this subroutine, you have to uh, copy the subroutine at the end of your main VMS subroutine, in which I've uh, copied it here. The same goes for the B uh, power 2 matrix in which I've defined here. Again, if you don't have this uh, KMLT subroutine or uh, your own written subroutine, you can simply use the matmule built-in function. Next, we are defining the uh, lambda 1 power 2, lambda 2, power 2, lambda t, power 2, to be used uh, for the first and second invariant. And uh, the main part is going to give us the sigma matrix. Uh, it is uh, the form uh, I have uh, shown you in the PowerPoint. And finally, we have to reorder the sigma matrix according to the VUMAT format in which I've written here. And the final part is going to give us the stress new vector from which Abacus calculates the new stress uh, components. And this is the uh, end of the subroutine. And we can use uh, this kind of um, formatting for the uniaxial stress for the blood school model. As I said before, this simplified model is only stable for uniaxial stretch. And if you have shear loading or shear stretches, uh, you have to write a view mat for the original uh, energy function. In this section, we want to see how our VUMAT performs 
under a uniaxial stretch. In this regard, I've created three models. The first one uses the abacus built-in function uh, for high-perform materials, which is a polynomial function. The second one uses our VUMAT for uniaxial stretches. And the third one uses our VUMAT for shear stretches. Uh, the purpose of the third model is to show you the instability of the Blasco simplified model. So for the first one, I'm going to use the Hyperform model and use the exact parameters of the simplified Blasco model, as I've shown you in the PowerPoints. And the second one uses the VMAT and it only has one input in which mu is equal to one. The rest of the modeling is identical for the uh, third, for these three models. Our boundary condition uh, for the left section of the uh, 2D model is according to this, and it is under a uniaxial stretch. And the meshing is explicitly linear for uh, the whole models, and our glass controls is default uh, for the model. I've already completed these jobs and I'm going to compare them. The second and the first one are going to be seen like this. So as you can see, the results for the um, Mises stress is almost identical and the little difference that exists here is because of the differences in our models and you can see that the VUMAT is performing well under the uniaxial stretches. However, if you want to see the instability of the VUMAT for the shear loading, you can uh, simply see that this is not the type that we wanted and uh, it gives you an idea of how instability looks like. This concludes our video. If you find this video useful, please support me by liking and subscribing to my channel. Take care.